Yeah, I think it just I think it just did because you 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 went out for a second and then came back. All so right. We are live. Today we got Austin. How do you say is it Copes? Copes. Austin Copes. Six figure Amazon seller out of where are you, where are you out of, brother? Maryland. Out of Maryland, part uh, in the Marine Reserves. Yes, sir. Um, so really happy to have you on, brother. Um, we'll do a you know quick little interview, kind of you know shoot the shit, and uh, hopefully uh, provide some uh, value for our followers. Yeah, um, man, sounds good. Yeah, dude. So you want to go ahead? Let's see. You said you know we were talking beforehand. You you started kind of part time back in 2017, right? Yeah. So I was in uh, finishing up college in 17, and I was kind of figuring out what I wanted to do, and I wasn't really thrilled about trying to go out and get a job because, you know, I, I never oh, want to have to work for somebody, <laughs> dude, you know how it is. So yeah. I started messing around with books near the end of 17 and then all of 18, me and my brother were going to thrift stores, buying books. And then uh, the beginning of 19, I kind of got away from books because I figured they were getting a little bit saturated. I swear everyone and their mother was selling is, is selling. And I feel like everyone starts off with that, you know, and I don't want that to be, um, my end goal is like something like private label. I don't want to stay, you know, so 100%. the biggest thing that, you know, scares me is staying stuck in something. So anyways, I, I, I had gotten ungated in CDs and DVDs, but I wasn't utilizing the, um, the gift, I guess you could say of actually be selling them because it's a, it's a gated thing. So that means, you know, less competition. CDs are, CDs well, are gated? CDs and DVDs are gated. Yeah. So how did you get that ungated? Um, there's a process you go through to do it. I actually sell a course on that. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay, cool. Because I've yeah. I've noticed that my uh, restrictions on certain brands have opened up as I've sold more. Uh huh. Be like I still don't have access to Nike and a bunch of shit that I'd loved, and and certain like healthcare stuff I can't sell. It's like yeah. in the ass. But that's really neat. So how did you figure that out? Kind of just self-study? You kind of researched it? or? Yeah, I, I researched it. I mean, I tell everybody how to do it, but, you know, my partner doesn't want me to, you know, start <laughs> saying what's in the course and whatnot. But That's we good. have we have a course for that and a course for uh, ma all major toy brands, how to get ungated. And the next course we're going to make is how to get ungated Nike, Adidas, and Under Armour. That's, that cool. should be coming soon. But not to, give away the, not to give away the secrets, but I heard from Reezy that you can literally, is, once you hit, like, 2,000 units, mm -hmm. it just unlocks. For which category? Nike. I've heard that too. But, because um, he said yeah. that, I mean, Reezy, you know Reezy resells or no? Yeah. He said that he has never heard of somebody getting unlocked to sell Nike through sending an application ever. Oh. Well, I have. So I don't have know. you really? Yeah. Holy shit. So, okay, maybe I misheard him or something. Yeah. Wow, that's neat though. Okay, cool, man. Well, then you got some quality, you got some value to add clearly there. Yeah. Um, where can they find your course if that's something people want to check out? Um, it's how to get ungated.com. Okay, how to get ungated. You got any links in your bio or anything? I do. Let me okay, just cool. double check real quick. To, uh, yeah. I, I need a link tree. I really do. It's all, it look, my, yeah, my page looks like ADD at the top. It's fire, man. It really is helpful. I give mine, I mean, what are you charging? I give mine away for like a dollar. I did got a little arbitrage course. I mean, what are you probably charging? 90 bucks, 100 bucks, 200 bucks? 99. There you go. Um, all yeah, right. So, how to get on gated.com. Okay, wondering. cool. So you started <laughs> out, um, you were out of college and you started playing around, getting doing the CDs. Um, you know, so you're, you're, you're in the weeds, you're selling on Amazon. Kind of where did you go into your second year? What were your, did, were you, what were your, was your kind of transgression there? Yeah, so um, like I said, at the end of 17, I messed with books, all of 18, and then I was like, it's getting kind of saturated, and I'm not really seeing the progress or the results that I want, so. Do you mind sharing your first year of sales or no? You would rather not? I think it was a little over 100. Okay, so you did 100,000 in sales. Mm hmm Yeah. Nice. So, and in 2019 is when I got into CDs and DVDs, and I was, so I started going back to thrift stores and looking for CDs and DVDs, and I was like, this is taking too long, this is ridiculous, yeah. I, need to, I need to do bulk, you know, I need to start doing some wholesale. So I searched the entire United States Craigslist for any leads on, <laughs> oh my God, on uh, some CDs uh, uh, in wholesale and bulk, so I found a guy in Arkansas that was selling 19 Gaylords of CDs. It was mixed with CDs, DVDs, video games, and a few other random things. Because when you buy in Gaylords, um, you what's can get a Gaylord for anyone that doesn't know? I don't even know what it is. Mm -hmm. It's a giant 
like cardboard box. It's like forty by forty eight by forty, and that's okay. basically yeah. So it's almost it's almost like a thing that would go on a pallet. Yes, yeah, sir. That's okay. it. And um, he was selling nineteen of them for like twelve hundred. So I had them shipped to a warehouse and then moved them all into my uh, I moved them into the UPS, you know, sixteen by twelve by twelve. Or the Home Depot boxes, not the UPS boxes. And I moved them all into my uh, basement within a, about, I think, nine days. Holy so, shit. Yeah, and man, then I worked out of my house. Workout. Yeah. That? That's, that must have been a good workout. Dude, it sucks. <laughs> but I got it That's done. That's awesome, though, dude. So you found fast. your first wholesale deal through Craigslist. Yeah. Wow. That's neat, man. I've been, I've been thinking, I've been trying to contact some companies directly, and mm-hmm. I've been, you know, struggling to hear back from them. I'm sure they got a bunch of people inquiring. Yeah. Um, so cool. So you get you got those. You know that was forty four thousand CDs. You did it what? Twenty eighteen. You said nineteen. Twenty nineteen. Okay. So how many did you sell your first year? You. I mean, did you do half? What did you do? What was that? How many did you, of the forty four thousand did you sell? Well, I had to go through obviously, and as you know, you got to scan them all. And I think my I retained about forty percent of the um. I sent in about forty percent, and by by the end of December, I had sent the, or the end of November, I had sent them all in, and we had a crazy good December month. That's and cool. in the future, I, I will say what my sales are, but I have to get to my goal first. <laughs> <laughs> well, I respect <laughs> but, that. Well, I respect that. But um, yeah, it's been um, it's definitely been a grind. Now I sell mostly new CDs and DVDs. And where are you and, getting them? Uh, Another wholesaler I found. It just I found everybody through Craigslist and Facebook, Facebook groups, crap like that. Wow. That's it. That's whenever people ask me, obviously I can't give the people my exact source, but I'm like, this is how you find it. And that's most people won't even tell you that. I, everything I found is on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, some eBay flips. Um, you find an you find an item that's you know in demand, like really hot demand. You can you know get it from eBay. Put it on Amazon. Sometimes you can double, triple your money. Yeah, so. that's sick, man. I think um, that's really cool. The the guy I was had on yesterday, oh, uh, he was from the UK, and I couldn't believe this. So he he started out doing, um, you know, same as you, books at thrift stores. He had mm-hmm. nothing, no car, nothing, and he would walk around his city with like one of those, you know, the, like the little carts that the poor people, you know, homeless people have. That yep. they, he would fill that up with books and go all, and he did that for like three or four months. Oh, um, yeah, man, just going from store to store. And then, but what I'm saying is, is that he found his wholesaler. Now he's doing much bigger quantities. He actually would find the products that he wanted to sell. He'd go into Amazon. You know how you can look, click on the seller. Mm-hmm. He would contact other sellers and be like, Hey, do you guys, I want to sell these products. Do you have any left over? And he'd buy them through this other seller's list. Dude, that's genius. Isn't you know, that would, smart as hell? Would, it's smart, but I would think they would be like buzz off. Well, you think know? about it. Think about it like this. I'm looking at my inventory right now, and there's a couple things that I know that like I either have too much of, they're not as selling as good. If people contacted me and be like, hey, I want some of these, I and, and I paid four bucks for it, mm-hmm. and I'm asking for 15 on Amazon and it's not selling, hell yeah, I'd give it away for tenors. Not, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. True. So I, he told me that, and I'm like, shit, that's fucking smart, dude. Yeah, that's an idea right there, bro. Yeah. So, Damn. okay, let's get back to you, though. So you did – Um, now you're doing all wholesale, mm-hmm. and are you focusing – so it's 2020. You did mostly you know, book stuff in 2019. Are you focusing on – you know what? I guess what I'm asking is, what are your goals right now? Do you have strategies for like, okay, we want to make our processes more efficient. We want to start getting into private label. We want to look at look, what are your kind of goals, and where do you see yourself going for the rest of the year? Well, I have a I have a private label item up right now that I'm selling for somebody else, and it's doing decently well. It's just I got to start an ad campaign and everything. But okay. my goal for the year was to find two more sources for CDs and DVDs because they sell. This is the reason I like them so much is, is they don't take up much space at, at, at um, FBA. Yeah. They can sell through fast, um, especially if they're new. I was going to say, are you getting hit with long-term storage fees or anything like that? Well, not right now because Amazon extended them because of the whole COVID thing to help people out. Oh, nice. So, yeah. But, yeah, um, generally I don't get hit with hard with a long-term storage fees because if it hasn't sold, I have a repricer and it goes into an automation if it hasn't sold and – 
eight months, it'll be cut to this price. I have it in sold nine, it'll cut to this price, and so forth and so forth, uh, and up to 11 or 12 months. I have an automation that cuts the price. But yeah, um, this year, yeah, the goal is to find three more wholesale suppliers. But, you know, this whole pandemic that's going on has had me kind of um, reevaluate things. It's been like, you know, I need to look into more categories. Yeah. You know, sell anything, not just be stuck in one. Yeah, dude, especially like if you're if you're stuck in one category, if something happens and either the demand for your products, let's say, drops off or, you know, you you lose contact with a wholesaler, you can't you know what I'm saying It, it, it makes you vulnerable. Yeah. You know. Um, that's cool. I, I'm doing nine, 80, 90% of my business is, um, retail arbitrage, but mm-hmm. I actually did do, a, I'll show you one of my signs. Do I have one here? Um, I did a private label product. These are actually going pretty steady. I have, do not ask me how I got this fucking idea. It's a, it's a serenity prayer. Have you heard of it? God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Yeah. yeah. And I put it on a like a little wood sign. And this one's got shit on it. Um, but I ordered 500 of them off Alibaba. And I mean, dude, I think my unit cost, um, I probably shouldn't share it, but I mean, it's, I paid three, four dollars a piece uh-huh. comp with shipping and everything. And I'm selling them for 20. Nice. So if you do the net math, I'm making about netting about 10 bucks a piece. Now, did you have them design that or was that already? I a... designed everything. Okay. okay. It took me, yeah, it probably took me two months of, of kind of to get everything, you know, get samples. Yeah. But dude, what really likes um, attracts me about private label is that, and I'm guessing this is what I'm curious to hear your opinion. But I'm guessing, uh, it, you know, it'll be similar to mine. It's just there's way more creativity that goes into it. There's way yeah. more ownership, and you're not you're what you're doing is you're not just generating revenue, but you're actually building an asset of a business that ha- owns products. It owns the brand name, and you're that's what it can, can go on and it's, it creates so much more value, not only as a business, but also for the customer. Yeah. And it's not only that dude is like, you know, I don't know how you feel, but when you're selling stuff, that's not yours or, you know, you're selling like books or DVDs and it's just, it's so mundane, repetitive. Yes. You know, I, I want, you know, like you said, the idea of creating a brand and like if, if a brand gets big enough, you can like, you know, go into deals yeah. and be like, you know, you know, target might reach out to you and be like, Hey, we want to put it on our shelves and crap. Because you know you've created your own thing. I, th- it's, I think it's a lot more exciting. It seems like you can scale it to you know crazy levels faster, yeah. but there is a, there's a lot more work in the beginning. But yeah, private label has always been like my end goal. Same. Whenever I get to that, so. Same. Yeah. No, I think it takes a lot more thinking. It takes a lot more planning and more creativity, more you know execution. Just it's a it's a whole other level. Oh yeah. Um. There's a great course though. Dude, you gotta check him out. His name's uh Brock Johnson. Have you heard of him? I haven't. Dude, I he has a course on private label. It's a dollar, okay? And this guy, there's hours and hours of content. Um, check him out. The guy's yeah. the real deal. He dollar. Did, <laughs> dude, I guess to take it. he um he well he went on Gary V's podcast. Um, and Gary V's like, dude, give it away. Give it away to people. Don't he was gonna charge like a thousand bucks. He's like, give it away to people, it'll come back to you in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, but I took his course, and I would not have been able to do that successfully without that. How hard was it, like getting the whole? I know you have to get like like a license to get it to come into the states and all that crap. Is it? It just just no. A I didn't pain? get no license. No? I might have done it illegally, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe uh, maybe I. Uh, I don't know. I've watched so many private label videos. You get all kinds of information, like on well, YouTube and whatnot. See, that's what I've done too in previously endeavors, dude. I've tried click funnels. I've tried real estate. I've, I've got dabbled in so much shit that I've zoned in. I've zoned out so many people because I know that there's so many people trying to tell you, sell you their course and tell you how to do it. I basically said, I'm going to, I'm going to get my hands dirty and figure this shit out myself. Mm -hmm. And then when I found that one person that I actually trusted that I had like a gut feeling like this guy is looking out for the best of me, I zoned in on his course and tuned everyone else out because dude, there's so much misinformation. It's so easy to get lost in the weeds. Yeah. You know, dude, you're right. I, there's one guy that I've been following for a while. I don't know if you heard about um, Trevor, Trevor Peterson. No, I haven't. Yeah. He's, he's a big private label guy. And I had the same feeling. I plan on getting his course. It's not a dollar, but, but I do feel like what I is he charge? Probably a thousand bucks. Yeah. Something like that. I think yeah, dude, 1200. Um, the only to each his own, if you've got that money to spend, go ahead. 
my my uh, opinion on those, dude. I've spent, I've signed up for six thousand dollar courses, and I've backed out, and I've gotten shafted several times. There's a lot of entrepreneurs out there that are looking out for people, and there's also a lot that are just being, you know, unethical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never. They have a vested interest in your success. Mm-hmm. I would say do it. If they don't, and they, you could drop a thousand bucks, and then. You know, I'm telling you, I think you can get all the value out of Brock's course, but mm-hmm. I'm not an affiliate or anything. <laughs> <laughs> what do you make, 20 cents off of each each sale that comes towards you? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Brock, oh, Brock. No, the guy's a real deal. The guy's a real deal. He's kind of a goof, too. So, uh, But no, I haven't heard of that guy, Trevor. Trevin. 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 Okay, what's he doing? What's he doing? I mean, I'm guessing millions in, in revenue. What's he selling? I, th- I think he does between a hundred and three hundred thousand a month. I don't know, but it's all private label, and he's a uh, he's a really good kid. Yeah. Oh, kid, how old is he? I think he's around your age. Wow. So I should say kid. I mean, younger than me. <laughs> That's what <laughs> I mean. <laughs> cool, man. So, uh, you got any family, kids, or anything? Wife? No. Thank God. There you go, dude. Well. Th- <laughs> well I, got, I, got, I got a girlfriend. That's it, man. I don't. We're not yeah, going well, to that level anytime soon. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it helps you focus on the business, you know, keeping out the distractions, right? That's exactly what I'm trying to do right now. And she's in school for, she's going to be in school. Um, she's getting an advanced degree, so she's going to be at school. We won't be getting married for a while. So that gives me plenty of time to scale my business. Absolutely, man. Before I get married, so. Yeah, dude, it's, you know, it's, it's really good, to, you know, before you, you know, settle down into the responsibility, have something that's going to pay you, pay you back, you know, and make money while you're sleeping. Right. Um, so I know for, um, I'm curious about your followers, but I'll, you know, my, a lot of people that, you know, have been tuning into me recently, um, Austin are primarily either thinking about getting started or just getting started. Um, so I guess if, if, I mean, if maybe you could speak to, if someone was just getting started, they literally just downloaded the Amazon seller app and they wanted, you know, given your expertise in media and books, you know, can you walk someone through, you know, for a little bit, wh- what stores should they go to? How can they start making money right away with Amazon or eBay and kind of maybe talk to that, that, that population? Yeah. I mean, if I, if I were, I tell most people, if they're getting started just to do books because you, they're, they're abundant, they're cheap. You can get them anywhere. I'd say start at, um, thrift stores, try not to pay more than a dollar per book. Like Stay Goodwill? Under, yeah. Okay, where Good, should we go wheels. now since things closed? Um, there's Is still there plenty of to... things on, you know, if you go on Facebook Marketplace, a lot of people, you can put, you can put up um, ads on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist and say, you know, I pick up, we'll pick up books for free. Like, I haul away your books. You can put bins, you can put cardboard uh, homemade bins outside of apartment complexes or whatever that says, you know. Um, book donations. Okay, wow, that's you know, there, there's plenty of plenty of ways to get your hands on them, but yeah, once this this thing, once the country gets back to work and whatnot, and they open up stores, I would you know Salvation Army, Goodwill, Second Ave, I, any any of the thrift stores generally have good prices. I'd say if you want to sell it quick, under a hundred thousand sales rank. Okay. Um, if you if you're willing to wait, I'd go up to a million, million and a half. I wouldn't go. I personally wouldn't go past that. But yeah, yeah. I definitely agree. Okay, so now if they find something around five hundred thousand, what do you find that takes to sell around what month or two? Or yeah, okay. It's so weird though. Sales are sales are constrained. Sometimes you'll send something in that like I sent in just I did a test one time. I sent in a fifteen million ranked book just to see just for the hell of it, and it sold within like two months. So wow. it's just it's it just gives you an idea. It's not completely. Yes. 100% it's not black and white. It's no. kind of like it's a it's a it's a pattern that is 60 to 80 percent of the time on track, but it, it's very easily can can go wrong. You right. Know? And then you, you get a book that's like ranked 100 and selling thousands of copies a day or a week. And you're like, OK, you know, that one's going to sell. That one's pretty clear cut. So, yeah, I've, I've sometimes I've sent in lower ranked books and they've sat there forever. So I don't know. Austin, just describe that feeling when you get a product that's got a sales rank of a hundred and your inventory's all the way up. Yeah. And it's, ding, ding, ding. yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Dude, such a good feeling, man. Such a good feeling. Dude, I know. Yeah. So Austin, I one question I always ask people is, what's what is it about Amazon or maybe entrepreneurship or owning a business? What is it, um, you know, at your core that's like 
that, that entices you about this and why not a nine to five or why, but why, why Amazon? What is it about this uh, lifestyle that entices you? Well, I would probably, I'd do I'd rather kill myself than work for somebody. I, I hate that idea. I never want to do it. I'm willing to do whatever it takes pretty much to, n- to never have to do that <laughs> ever again. In 2019, I was put in 60 to, 60 to 100 hour weeks every week because wow. I just wanted to get that inventory in. Um, I love the idea of entrepreneurship because of the freedom. You know, what, what was it saying? I'm working a, I'm working 100 hours a week so that one day I, you know, I'm not wor- looking for a retirement or anything yeah. like that. You know, 100%. I'm just trying to get to that point. But um, I don't know, it was something romantic thinking about, like, I own my own business. I can do what I want. You know, if, if, if I want to, I don't really, you know, do this because it's Amazon, you have to put in a lot of work, but it's not like it, you, you don't, you don't get to, to Sunday and you're like, Oh God, you know, I got to go in Monday. It's like, no, I get to do what I love and what I like. So. Yeah. And you get what you put into it, which is what right. I really love. You know, like if I want to take a week off and I want to slow down a little bit, like, okay, the business is going to slow down if you want to take a break. But if I want to get it going, I get it going. It's all on me. Yeah. Um, you don't have to I ask the that, boss for permission. <laughs> exactly. I think a lot of people romanticize about entrepreneurship. Um, and I think that's starting to change now because of the the virus and reality sets in. It's kind of exposing some of the fakes, but people think, oh, if I could just do this, then I could live, you know, the, a lot of people selling courses and stuff, all, oh, you know, the lifestyle, but you don't realize that, you know, as an entrepreneur, you usually go from 40 hour weeks to 80 hour weeks. I tell them before they buy my course, um, I tell them the whole thing, especially if they're new. I'm like, dude, this, it's going to suck in the beginning. You know, right. there's a lot of ups and downs. You know, you're going to have a lot of self doubt. It's not freaking fun. I'm just oh, letting you know, but once you get over that hump, yeah, you know, yeah. Did you have a lot of doubt when you were getting started? Like, what oh, was that like? God, like, yeah. <laughs> making the transition. What was that like? I mean, emotionally kind of. Until I, until I was selling a certain amount each month, I, I, I was doubting it like every week. Yeah. And, and yeah, it's a terrible feeling. Um, and then, you know, you have that and it gets in your head. Yeah. And you have to, um, What's your advice to people? Like, I mean, because I know so many people, like I, I get asked all the time, how did you develop the confidence financially to go from your job to transitioning? What did, did you have ways of coping with that self-doubt or like, I'm going to, you know, or what you, what did you tell yourself? I, well, I believe in, you know, positivity, you know, yeah. positive thought. So uh, that, that really helped me. Um, but I don't know. I'm, I'm someone that really doesn't quit anything. And that's probably something that I learned in the Marine Corps and whatnot and finishing college and what have you. But dealing with the, the self-doubt, there's – I don't know. It just it, I had to get to a level of – I guess it was – once I got to a point where, you know, Amazon was bringing in 2,000 2, every two weeks, 3,000 every two weeks. Then I was like, oh, okay, this is working. I can stop, you know, freaking out about it Yeah. or whatever. So, <laughs> so there was, seeing the results was like, okay, this is real. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. I was working, uh, you know, my full time job probably two or three months before I, you know, cut it up, you know, job and then hustling after work before mm-hmm. I had the confidence to be like, okay, this is going to be a real thing now. Yeah. And even now, dude, like I tell people, like, I'm not kidding, bro. There are some days that I wake up with as big as I've gotten um, where I'm like, what if this is all a scam? Like, what if? Really? <laughs> Well, I don't, I, I guess that's a bad way of saying it, but like, what if like, I don't know. It's not like I like feel like a fraud, but like, you feel like, I don't know. It's like where you doubt yourself still. Like, it's like, what like if this imposter syndrome or something? I, kind of. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. It's like, is this too good to be true? Like, I don't know. Well, um, I mean, I mean, after everything that's happened this year, half of me thinks we're in a simulation anyway. So <laughs> You okay? So you're on board. Have you seen the Elon Musk Joe Rogan yeah. episode? I saw. Have I saw seen- not the most recent one. I only saw clips of that. But yeah. Let me just. This is my um. This is whole. This this is way off topic. But no, let me that's just- I, this is. I'm open to everything. I talk okay. about everything on my page, and I love talking about spirituality, life. So go ahead, whatever you want. Okay. Man. So number one, almost went to war with Iran after we killed their top general. Remember that in yeah. December or no, 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 not December. January, February time. I remember then, seeing that. Yeah. Then Australia caught on fire. Then there was huge locust swarms and breakouts in Africa. Then Kobe Bryant and his daughter died in a helicopter crash. 
then the COVID-19. And then just recently, the Pentagon released footage that UFOs <laughs> and aliens apparently exist. And yeah, that's what we got so far. And we're four months, Five, nine, well, nine days into the year. Because it's only May, it's only May, May 9th. And yeah. that's, that's quite a bit to uh, handle. So once all that happened, COVID had kind of put me at that simulation point, And then uh, <laughs> the UFO thing happened. I'm like, this shit ain't real. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but what a wild well, year, at least. It is wild, bro. It's like, I don't know about you, but this year has definitely been a year of major transformation for me. I feel like, I mean, yeah, it's it's a lot of stuff has happened, and it's really eerie. Like, it's it, it feels like we're in a video game almost sometimes. Yeah. It really, and I've had other people tell me that. It's like, what is it? Why is it, why is it all condensing it into 2020? What, I mean, do you have an idea or? I don't, I mean, I believe in God and I think that he might be set, giving us the reset button. I have no idea. But when it comes to like all this within four months, basically, I can't make sense of it. It doesn't, I can't make sense of it. I don't know the reasoning. Um, yeah. I've heard a lot. I've, I don't, what really, do you think? I don't have a specific theory. Um, I also believe in the power of positivity and I, yep. and I'm, um, I've studied a lot of yoga and a lot of Eastern philosophy, and I'm well aware that our minds are creating our reality. Yep, we create you know, our own reality. Here's the deal, and I was talking with my sister about this the other day. It, the conspiracy theories, if you look into some of them, dude, I mean, there's really, it's very, very difficult to denounce a lot of the facts that they're sharing. Like, now, with that being said, what you focus on grows. So, yeah, you I saw your thing on the law of attraction. I, I, um, I do believe whatever you focus on, it grows. You, you magnify. Yeah. So I think that, I don't know. I mean, it, 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 what is causing all this craziness? I don't know. It could be solar flares. I've heard that um, we're, we go through 10-year cycles of these solar flares, and maybe we're awakening a, a consciousness as our species as we go from shedding the paradigm. I mean, in terms of our consciousness, we're so much smarter than the way that our society acts. Like yeah. if you look at the way that we act out on a day-to-day -day basis, going to jobs we hate, um, disengaging, um, not empowering ourselves with emotional and intellectual capabilities, it's it's almost embarrassing that we don't unlock the potential of the human spirit. And I think that maybe 2020 is sort of a physical manifestation in the outer world of, okay, wake the fuck up, people. Open your eyes. Yeah. And maybe that's it. I don't know, though. I don't know. That's a, that's a, that's a good theory on it, to be honest with you, because the I mean, people are not living happy lives. And if I, I'm a history major, so n people have gone okay. through, you know, quite a bit, you know, you know, and just, it, I mean, I, I, there was a guy that I was talking to and he was really freaking about, freaking out about this whole thing. And I tried to explain to him what people in World War II went through, just the civilians uh -huh. or the soldiers. And it's like, we got it pretty good. Even though you hate your job, yep. you know, we still have it pretty, pretty darn good. But at the same time, I do believe in finding something you love. And I couldn't imagine waking up every morning going sitting in traffic to go to a job you hate in a cubicle you know it's just i don't think humans were meant to sit down and not right. be in the sunlight you know inside all this just it blows my mind we're screwing it up you know yeah dude we really are we really are and you know and it's funny you say that i saw a meme the other day or no no it was a video warren buffett and he goes if you were um a soul or whatever if you were if you got to decide when you want you know when i wanted to be a human you wouldn't pick 1720. You wouldn't pick 1820. You definitely wouldn't pick 1920. If you got to decide, you would pick to be a human being right now. There is no before this before all this before happens. This, you would yeah. Pick. <laughs> there, yeah, maybe you would pick like 2025 or, or 2018. I don't know, but you yeah. pick now. The technology, the the peace, the yeah. the opportunity. There's yes. just. I mean, if you listen to a lot of the psychologists like Jordan Peterson, you know, seeing he denounces a lot of the bullshit. People will tell you that things are getting worse. Things are getting better. Yeah. yeah I lo Humanity I love is progressing, mm -hmm. you know? And um, so, yeah. Poverty has gone down worldwide. It's at the lowest point. I think um, crime's at its lowest point. So, yeah. at, at, on a, uh, at a world scale. But yeah, I remember listening to him and he was saying all this stuff. And I was like, wow, you know, we actually have improved quite a bit. Yeah. You, so you listened to you've heard you've heard of Jordan Peterson before. Oh gosh, yeah. I love yeah. him. <laughs> you oh, you've heard a lot of his content then. Oh yeah. Oh my god, dude, he's great. He's smart as a whip. I know. 
he's almost he's, he almost has so much ideas. He studied so much and he's got so much experience. He almost can't talk fast enough. Yeah, there's a lot going on in his head, and you can see it when people ask him a question. He will kind of just look down and frown, and he's and there's like it's, you know it's like yeah, you know, it's going through his head. Like, um, have you ever did you watch uh, Avengers? Uh, Infinity War, where Doctor Strange is sitting there looking at all the realities that could happen. That's like Jordan Peterson's head. <laughs> he's trying to come up with a uh, yeah. An well, he's so good at like uh, like articulating ideas in his mind. It's just very, very. I'm so grateful. Um, how did you find out about him? Do you do you remember? Um, I think the whole Kathy Newman. No, 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 no. When he was um, oh, I that felt, interview was hilarious. Yeah, she was. She's something else. But it was the uh. <laughs> What what do you call it? The uh, when he was he got in trouble on campus for the uh, the pronouns. Oh or whatever. shit! Yeah, dude, people were fucking. Yeah. And it wasn't that he was against them. It's like you're forcing me to say something, you know, compelled compelled speech. You know, I'm not going to go along with that. And I was like, dude, he's got some balls. So. Yeah, he does. He stands up for what he believes, and no mm -hmm. questions asked. Right. No questions asked. Um, that's awesome, man. Um, this is awesome, dude. We went off topic. I love it when that happens. I know, dude. I did. I, you look at my page. I've had people tell me, you know, your page is a little over the place. And I'm like, good. I'm all over the what? place. I, yeah. thought, I want to talk about business. I want to talk about life, spirituality, psychology. I want yeah. it all. Um, okay, Austin, I guess we can kind of wrap it up here in the next few minutes. Um, is there anything, you know, you want to share um, in terms of kind of, I don't know, maybe books you've read or maybe some uh, major changes in your thinking that your business has caused or anything maybe you want to share to the, to the, to the viewers? Um, business wise. And then I'll go into some books that are really good business wise. I would su suggest a lot of people don't get discouraged at this point, just because, you know, there are a lot of restrictions with Amazon that, you know, we've had to kind of go around. Um, you might need to reorganize or rethink how you, you know, you're running your Amazon business, but just keep going. Um, again, this is, I'd, I'd say Amazon itself is one of the, the greatest opportunities. Yes, of, man. Oh, ever. Let's give a round of applause for that yeah. statement, baby. <laughs> Come on. Right. I'm literally looking at my friends and family and I'm punching them in the head. I'm like, do <laughs> not see what's going on right now. And once you get the hang of it, it's not, it's not that hard. You know, you just got to get the process. Dude. And it's like the hardest thing is just to start. And then yeah. once you start, just don't quit. Yeah. Educate yourself. Figure out what you're doing and you go from there. Awesome. Books, obviously, 12 Rules for Life of Jordan Peterson and then Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins is really good, too. Oh, I haven't read that one, dude. I've heard really great things about him. You, you read that and you'll be like, why okay. am I not doing more with my life? Okay, hold on. What's that called? It was it Can't Hurt Me? Yeah, by David Goggins. Okay. Dude, he's he's he is um, a powerful force. You, you, you see people, a lot of um, – inspirational speakers and, and stuff come through the ropes. You know, I mean, I've, he, he's one of those people that he doesn't just walk the walk. He, dude, he, his whole story, the way he talks, everything is a complete embodiment of inspiration. And for, like, it really is. He's a, he's a powerful guy. I didn't um, know people like him even existed until like, I saw that. I was like, you see this stuff in movies. He's the real deal. 24 seven. Dude, he and doesn't like what he went through to get through that, and like, I mean, he's a, he's a seal. He was two other types of special forces operators yeah. as well. You yeah, know, have you so. listened to um? He has a podcast with Ed Milet. I I didn't know he had one. No. Oh uh, no no no! I'm sorry. He uh, who is the guy? David Goggins does not have a podcast, but Ed Milet has a podcast. Have you heard of Ed Milet or no? Dude, that name sounds so familiar. Who? Okay, Ed Milet. Check him out. He's um the guy basically build his whole business on uh, millions of dollars in life insurance, but he runs an ex one of the best self-improvement um, podcasts. He interviews everybody. And he, Ed Milet had, it's called, what is it called? Uh, I forget. Oh what yeah. It. Yeah. I've watched his podcast. I just had to look up a picture real okay. quick. Okay. Yeah. So he, um, Ed Milet had David Goggins on. Dude, after I listened to that podcast, I went on the treadmill and ran 13 miles. <laughs> Hell Yeah. Um, I'm not kidding. Hell yeah, man. He he ran a hundred. He he ran a David Goggins wrote, ran a hundred mile race or something with like a fractured shin. It was like, no, his feet were broken. His feet were broken. I'm like, what? and he was like, he like, he was defecating on himself. His feet were broken, and then at the end of the at the end of the race, he it wasn't like the Navy SEAL training that made him think like I can accomplish so much more. He said, I'm leaving so much on the table because he just ran. 
a hundred miles with all those obstacles, got over it, finished the race. And then he, at that point he was like, man, there's so much more I could be doing in my life Yeah. because I just, so yeah, human potential, like Peterson says, it's hard to measure, but, um, I think we're all capable of more than what we're actually doing, which yeah. is a lot of pressure to put on somebody, but you know, it is true. I think we need that now more than ever. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so many people, because there's, there's Austin, there's so many reasons to contract. There's so many r really valid excuses to sit at home and do nothing. Yeah. But there's every, also every reason to go be great too, you know? Well, that's one of the reasons I started up YouTube again. And I was like, I was, when, when Amazon was on hold, I was like, well, I'm, you know, I've been talking about YouTube and talking crap for like 10 years, me and my brother. So we did, we started a, our YouTube channels and we started oh, a podcast. Nice. So, you guys had a decent following or? <clears throat> no, I mean, I just started, I got like, I don't know, 88 followers or some crap on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> no, so it's nothing big yet, but I just, the fact that I just did it and I got it done, I was happy that that happened. Cause you know how you talk smack about someone and then, you, you know, you never do it. So. Yeah, dude, just it's about it out of the way. Just my advice, bro. Keep it consistent. Try to get a schedule going, um, yeah. and just stick to it, and the results will come. You know. But yeah, dude, I mean, feel free to share this on your channel. Um, I'd love to come on your podcast. You know, down the road, if you want. Oh, for sure. Um, and I, I think we can wrap it up, Austin. I would love to to reach back out um, and kind of go in uh, personally for us. Maybe I could share a little bit about my retail stuff, and um, you could share a little bit more about your wholesaling stuff. Sure. Okay. Absolutely, man. It was a pleasure. Yeah, sweet dude, Austin. Thank you so much, dude. All right, man. All right, take care, brother. All right, see ya.